The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IONS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. This past July, just before the IONS conference in Philadelphia, NDE Radio talked with guests Robert and Suzanne Mays on the lecture they were preparing on a prophecies gained through NDEs. I attended that lecture and afterwards suggested they allow me to present the talk itself as a two-part show for the listeners. After all, one of the most fascinating aspects of NDEs are visions and messages of what lies ahead for the world at large, and that's what researchers Robert and Suzanne will report on today and on next week's Part 2. Robert and Suzanne have studied the phenomena of near-death experiences together for some 40 years, although neither has had an NDE. Their research focuses on the phenomena connected with the out-of-body component of NDEs, especially veridical perceptions and other verified paranormal phenomena during an NDE. Their theory of consciousness, the mind-entity hypothesis, is derived from NDE and neurological phenomena. It explains how the non-material uh, mind interacts with the brain in ordinary consciousness. They wrote the foreword to the book, The Self Does Not Die, published by IONS, and their website is selfconsciousmind.com. On this and next week's show, Robert and Suzanne present the talk they gave at this year's IONS conference titled Prophetic Visions in Near-Death Experience, with warnings for our current time. NDEs frequently give indications that time during the experience is suspended, and that the transcendent realm is actually timeless, and that the events of the NDE seem to occur all at once. Two key elements in some NDEs relating to time are the familiar life uh, review and, uh, more rarely, a life preview, visions of likely future events in an NDE's personal life or in world events. In their talk, the May's focus is on prophetic visions of future world events. Prophetic visions in NDEs can be viewed as admonitions or warnings. The May's conclude the future can be changed based on people's free will choices. Therefore, it is crucial that people adopt a positive and accepting attitude toward the future and adjust how they relate to others to be more loving, accepting, tolerant, and kind. It should be noted that IONS takes no particular political or religious point of view in the work it does or in the conference lectures it presents. Robert and Suzanne are attempting here simply to report on a confluence of prophecies they have collected from near-death experiencers themselves. So thank you very much for coming to our presentation this morning. I'm Robert Mays, and Suzanne and I are NDE researchers. You can read more about our research at our website, selfconsciousmind.com. More than 40 years ago, Suzanne and I read Raymond Moody's book, Life After Life. Somewhat later, we also read Return from Tomorrow by George Ritchie. The story of Ritchie's very deep, profound NDE. In this book, he detailed his encounter with the being of light whom he took to be Christ, who took him on an extensive tour of the spiritual world. We felt that both books were very confirming of the spiritual nature of the human being and the existence of a transcendent spiritual reality. Many years later, in 2005, we began a serious study of NDEs phenomenologically. Neither of us has had an NDE. So today we bring a study of prophetic visions experienced by NDEers, predicated on the understanding that we have developed in our research, two points. First, there's strong evidence that the human being is a non-material spiritual entity. We do not die with the death of the physical body. And secondly, reality consists of the physical realm and a more fundamental, encompassing, transcendent, or spiritual realm. Now we have three disclaimers. 
First, in this presentation, we are presenting our views based on interpreting Andy Ears' testimony. Our views may or may not agree with the views of IANS or the IANS Board of Directors. And second, our findings are still preliminary and will be further refined as we continue our work. And third, the identity of subjects in our study is confidential and we've assigned random initials. Fifteen of our subjects have also written books, so we feel free to quote passages from their books. We use the initials for information disclosed in the survey that we conducted, unless the subjects gave us permission to use their names. The motivation of our study came in March 2016, when Endier Ken Lett related several prophetic visions during an interview on IN's NDE radio. And his visions involved the current political environment involving the 2016 presidential race and subsequent events. And later we also learned of the possibility of similar visions received by NDE George Ritchie, and thus we started our study. Our intention in this presentation is to wake people up wake people up to the spiritual realities that are now playing out in the world, and particularly as they are evident in Andy Ears' prophetic visions. We hope that people will hear the message from the Andy Ears' prophetic visions and not filter it out. It would be good to start with examples of archetypal prophetic visions. So George Ritchie's NDE happened in 1943, before the development of the atomic bomb and nuclear arms race. He had a vision at the end of his NDE of two corridors opened by the being of light. In the first corridor, as the being of light, whom he called Christ, showed him, he saw increasing natural disasters, earthquakes, volcanoes, people becoming more selfish, families splitting, governments breaking apart, culminating in explosions occurring all over the world. In the second prophetic vision that the Christ showed him, he saw instead the planet grew more peaceful, man not as destructive of nature, beginning to understand what love is, people becoming more like the beings he saw in the fourth and fifth heavenly realm. And the Christ said to him, It is left to man which direction he shall choose. And another experiencer, Tom Sawyer, had a profound NDE in 1978. His pickup truck fell on him, crushing his chest, and he was dead for 15 minutes. He says, I have memory of events that haven't happened yet from my NDE when I was part of universal knowledge. Two instructive examples of Tom Sawyer's prophetic visions that came to him after his NDE. First is the L-1011 TriStar plane crash. In October 1983, five years after his NDE, Tom had a vision of a, the crash of an L-1011 TriStar jet. At a gathering of NDEers, a statement was made, there will never be another crash of an L-1011 plane. Because Tom could not let any untruth be uttered in his presence, he turned around and blurted out, that's not true. But that meant that there would be another L-1011 crash, and Tom became very upset. He knew a lot of the details of the crash. He knew the first names of all the people in the plane, and that 90% of them would die. But he didn't know where it would crash. He also knew of all the details of the man who would be killed on the ground driving a car. 22 months later, on the morning of August 2nd, 1985, Tom had a vision that the crash would happen later that day. He called NDE researcher Bruce Grayson and told him, about six or seven hours before it happened, that the plane would go down in a thunderstorm as it approached the airport. Delta Airlines Flight 191 crashed at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport on August 2nd, 1985 at 6.05 p.m. 136 of the 163 passengers and crew were killed. 
One man on the ground was killed when his car was crushed by the plane when it slid across a highway. There was nothing Tom Sawyer could do to prevent or mitigate the accident. And then there is another case where Tom was successful in intervening with prayer to avert a mid-air collision. Tom saw that two planes were going to collide head-on in mid-air. He says, I became aware of this precognitively, even aware of the clock time. I worked with one of the pilots. As the event was taking place, there was extraordinary spiritual permission. Therefore, there was extraordinary effort put forth in loving the pilot of one of the planes. One only needed to be still and love the pilot of that plane. Just love the pilot and give him a prayer or a love gesture so that he will feel some degree of enhancement. A scenario like this took place. The pilot is really very bored. The plane is on autopilot. But he starts feeling really wonderful. He says to himself, I am a really good pilot, and I'm proud of that. You know, I should sit up straight and in the proper position, even though the plane is on autopilot. Just sit up. When he did so, the pilot saw the other plane in exactly enough time to dive out of the way. Now, here are some details about our study. We did an extensive literature review of prior research, and we conducted a survey of NDEers who self-identify as having had prophetic visions of future world events. Eleven of the surveys met our criteria for inclusion out of 32 that were returned. We also had access to the IN's experience registry data. These, these are NDE reports that have been sent into IANs. With five NDE submissions that indicated receiving visions of future world events. Fifteen NDEers also wrote books or articles describing their prophetic visions. So among these three sources of data, we have 22 total subjects, and many of the subjects fit in two or three of our data sources. So what is the phenomenal experience of a prophetic vision? Precognitive experiences in an NDE occur during a life preview, which is usually part of a life review. From the IANS experience registry data, we found that only about 4% of NDEers report seeing future world events. So that's a very small number of NDEers. The end of year many times has a sense of having access to all knowledge in the NDE, covering all of the Earth's history and future. Specific visions may be revealed to the end of year on a globe of the world, or as a quick glimpse of many future events like riffling through the pages of a book. In general, most future visions in the NDE are suppressed after the NDE. The visions can come back in a dream or a waking vision. They can be triggered by the approach of the future event, sometimes years before, more commonly weeks or days or hours before the event, or when the NDE hears about the event. Margot Gray, one of the researchers that we reviewed, says some NDEers claim that they were told at the time that they would not be able to recall everything, but would only have access to it when and if the need arose. And subjects in our study also said this. The event can be triggered also by being in a particular place. One NDEer in our study had several prophetic visions when visiting a specific location such as the Murrow building in Oklahoma City, and having an intense sense of dread, or also having a vivid sensation of being transported into a future time at that same location. 
The prophetic visions are vivid and intense and have a compelling quality. And here are three examples. So Elizabeth Crone says, there is the rush or power of the precognitive nightmares. These truly spirit me away as if I were on a runaway horse. There is an energy force that will not allow me to awaken. Even as I am struggling with a vision of some horrific scene, I am simultaneously receiving information. Once I receive whatever information I'm supposed to be given, I will be able to open my eyes and make it stop. Whatever I saw is seared into my memory. And in the year Tom Beck says, seeing all these visions of disasters and terrorism started to affect me physically. The more intense visions would cause me to be physically weak and sometimes disoriented and dizzy. The deeper and darker the vision, the worse these effects are. Sometimes after a particularly bad vision of terrible evil acts and many deaths, I'm unable to walk for short periods of time. And Professor Abednego, which is a pseudonym, says the premonitions are sometimes preceded by what I would call a cold spiritual wind. These premonitions lack affect, that is, there is no fear, no agitation, no emotion attached to the visions. They are kind of factual, like reading a word's definition in a dictionary. The prophetic visions can vary from a general description or image to extremely detailed specific facts about the future event. Professor Begnego believes that the more specific a prophetic vision is, the more likely it has already been set in motion on a spiritual level. The visions are usually completely accurate, or nearly so, when the event finally occurs. For example, Tom Sawyer had numerous veridical aspects of his vision of the L-1011 crash. And here's an example of Elizabeth Crone. The first plane crash nightmare I had was on July 16th, 1996, about eight years after my NDE. It really rocked me badly. In the nightmare, I knew there were 230 people on board and that none of them had survived. I knew that the plane crashed in water and I knew that it was flight 800. I called my mom and told her about the nightmare on the morning of July 17th, 1996. The next morning, July 18th, mom called me to turn on the news quickly. And there it was, TWA flight 800, they crashed in the Atlantic Ocean that very evening with 230 on board, no survivors. This particular nightmare really upset me because of its accuracy. So in some cases, the end of year can do nothing about the situation. As with Tom Sawyer and Elizabeth Crone, Elizabeth Crone also seeing earthquakes and a tsunami, and Tom Beck seeing terrorist attacks. But the end of year comes to realize that the visions of this sort are real and are likely to be accurate. In other cases, there can be successful intervention, for example, through prayer, for example, with Tom Sawyer preventing the mid-air collision. And Tom Beck says this, after 9-11, people came together and we prayed together by the thousands, hundreds of thousands. I know there were planned attacks that did not take place because of our praying. I know because I saw the attacks that were to take place and had such hope that other attacks I saw were not going to happen, but they did. We go weary of the war and we quit praying. Margot Gray says, in fact, Many NDEers stress that events can always be affected by right human action and prayers to God for his intervention. So we can conclude, I think reasonably, that predictions that fail to materialize can be due to the free will choices of individuals. An NDEer told Gray, I was also shown events that are likely to happen in the near future 
but was made to understand that nothing is absolutely fixed, that everything depends on how we choose to use our own free will, that even those events that are already predestined can be changed or modified by a change of our own way of relating to them. And several end years say the best prophetic visions are the ones that do not happen. Now, we're going to go through the significant prophetic visions that we received, the most specific ones. And there are five common categories of prophetic visions found in our study. And you can see from the slide that there are a number of and the ears who have seen these visions. And we've selected the visions with the most specific details to illustrate the variations among the different visions. So the first category is current political conflict and civil strife in the U.S. Second is economic and social chaos caused by widespread power failures. The third is severe tsunamis, earthquakes, and natural disasters. The fourth is what we call the reset of the earth, where many, many people die, caused by a, probably a supervolcano or an asteroid strike or a nuclear war. And we note that there's some disagreement among the ears because the angel said to Howard Storm about the possibility of nuclear war, no, that is not going to happen. God will not allow a nuclear war. And then there are visions of the post-reset world, which are, from the end of years accounts, are anywhere from 150 to 300 years hence. And we have a caveat here. None of these prophetic visions is completely certain to happen, from what we've already said. There is a certain probability that they will happen, given the pattern of actions or inactions already set in motion. But human beings can change and choose to act differently, which will alter the outcome. Other human beings can intervene through their own actions, for example, with prayer and compassion towards others. So when we go through these visions, please listen with an objective mind to all of the prophetic visions, regardless of your own political or religious persuasion, please. This first category is political conflict and civil strife, and the first vision comes from Ken Lett. Ken's visions occurred during his September 1963 NDE at age eight. They were pointed out to Ken on a globe of the world in the region of the United States. Most of his visions were deliberately suppressed after the NDE and then returned as visions starting in his early 20s. His first visions of the vile, disruptive president came back in early 2016, prior to his March 2016 interview on NDE radio. Here are the major parts of his vision. I saw the assassination of JFK and was told it would trigger a period of turmoil and that it would be the beginning of some bad events in the U.S. and those events would eventually make our nation bitter. Then the vision jumped to a point in the future, much later in my life. I saw what looked like a large government building with multiple tall pillars in front, I think it was the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C., and was told that an important ruling would take place there. This caused a kind of mass rebellion centered in the hearts of people, mostly men. Many of them were of the evangelical religion. And this is possibly the 2015 ruling on same-sex marriage. Then the vision changed where I observed a woman speaking during her presidential campaign. She was running for office during a period of much turmoil. I later heard Hillary Clinton speak during her campaign and it was the same voice I heard in the vision. Also, I did not see her as a bad person. She was one of the last good chances to turn our country around. Next, I saw a man leading our country and he is president. He is a vile, disruptive man who causes people to lose faith in our government. The man is arguing with everybody, causing unhappiness and disruption. 
I remember the man being blonde. Now, comment here. The factual events in Ken's vision from 1963, most people would agree, have so far been accurate. The rest of Ken's vision has yet to happen. Then a group of men confront this president in his office. He was pushed out of his position in government. Next, he was removed from the government buildings as he stood outside shouting to crowds, shaking his fist. He is extremely angry, inciting violence, rioting, and destruction. People are fighting and injuring each other. There were men in the crowd that appeared as dark shadows with evil intent, and I got the impression they were not Americans. They were working purposely to cause more violence, pushing people to fight in the streets, using misinformation. Now, again, a comment. Please note that the vision does not say when exactly or how the president comes to be removed. And again, remember that this vision was given to Ken in 1963. At this point, I asked the teacher entity how it was that this terrible man came to be our president. I was shown a vision of the Bible and something like a line of progression, which, after a point, highlighted Southern evangelist religions. These churches only worship money and political involvement, and they guide people to vote for the angry president. They are doing this in the name of God, which is a horrible sin. The evangelical movement was a main influence in getting the terrible man elected. They promote him as someone God supports. The next part, the fighting in the streets after he is removed from office has the nation shaken and appalled, but after a while the fighting settles down. Then I saw the evil president inside a disruption, like a spinning spiral wheel. I understood this image to mean that he would pass away, thus ending his influence. I saw him in a hospital bed with people standing around him before the spinning disruption indicated his passing. The president will not live very long after leaving office. I don't know what caused the evil president to die. After he is gone, next point, there appeared to be a sense of hope returning to the country among those who did not like the disrupted president. But it's too late, and the seeds of evil that he planted continue to grow until more disruption returns and the ultimate battles begin. At this point, America is divided in a similar fashion as the previous civil war in the 1860s, and most of the fighting takes place in cities in the south and eastern states. This civil war is much worse than the first, and now we will skip the subsequent events during the civil war in his vision until we reach the point where it, the vision showed that the civil war ends and there is remorse and sorrow. And the last two parts of his vision will be covered in other categories. So Professor Abednego, again, that's a pseudonym. So this is, again, still in this category. His first visions of Trump as president occurred in July 2016. He said, I wanted to deny the visions big time, but my spirit knew they were true. As with Ken Lett's visions, many people would agree that some of Abednego's visions have already occurred, but others remain possible future events. I saw Donald Trump become an American Fuhrer. I saw Trump increase terrorism by his actions, thereby able to establish martial law. I saw Trump imprison oppositional news, eliminate political enemies, fill the courts with judges who worshipped him. I saw news media unwittingly help Trump to become a dictator. Trump's ultimate goal is to eliminate the other two branches of government so he can rule as a permanent dictator. Well, that's all we have time for today, but join us next Monday for part two of the May's NDE Prophecy Study. My thanks again to Robert and Suzanne. If you'd like to listen to this show again or any of our past shows, just go to our website at nderadio.org. For information on IANS, go to IANS.org, I-A-N-D-S.org. And join us again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for more NDE Radio. This is Lee Whitting saying thanks for listening.